Season 6 of The Crown is the official end of the show, but even though there is a ton of material for a seventh season, this conclusion is the greatest one for the program. You felt I didn't marry a family, I married a man, I married you because I loved you. Since its hugely successful 2016 premiere on Netflix, The Crown has grown to become one of the streaming service's most valuable properties, thanks to its dynamic ensemble cast of characters. With its narrative of the turbulent history of the royal family spanning Queen Elizabeth II reign in the mid-20th century and beyond, the series is an ideal flagship for the streamer, drawing viewers in during the crucial early years of the service, thanks to its blend of high-end production values and frequently scandalous real-life subject matter. The show itself has benefited greatly from Netflix's support, enjoying substantial budgets and the license to tell stories that a traditional network might find too risky. While both sides are likely sad to see the partnership conclude, the choice to end the crown with season six is the right one. There are numerous factors behind the decision, including show creator Peter Morgan's assessment that the real-life events of a potential season seven would be too recent to provide the time to gain a proper perspective. Politics, the internet, and simple artistic judgment also play into the reasons why The Crown is right to conclude before season 7. The royal family's story after The Crown season 6 is already widely known, The Crown's progressing timeline has always been a problem for the show. The Netflix series makes the bold decision to rapidly blow through decades and historical events, while such an approach allows the writers to tackle a greater number of significant events within the show's run, the repeated changes to the cast and the status quo constitute a risk. As The Crown's history becomes more and more recent, the events it dramatizes become more well-known among the living memory of audiences. As the real events grow more familiar, the show's creative license becomes increasingly limited with each season. While comparatively few viewers are well-versed in the politics of the royal family in the 1940s and 50s of the first season, the infamous events of later seasons carry the expectation of a faithful recreation. This problem would only worsen in the post-2005 setting of a prospective The Crown season 7, where the events depicted would be within the living memory of the vast majority of audiences. What's more, the rise of the internet in the 21st century means that the royal family's every move is charted extremely closely. It would be difficult for the crown to continue to tell its own story within such restrictive parameters, especially when tackling the royal family's most controversial and divisive historical events. The real royal family lost more power and interest after the crown season 6's timeline, Netflix's The Crown charts one of the most tumultuous periods in the history of the royal family, as the rapid progress of the 20th century takes its toll on the institution's power and influence. With the monarch's power already weakened as Elizabeth ascends to the throne in season one, the ensuing power struggles chart a notable decline in the royal family's material power. A proposed The Crown continuation in season seven would need to chart the family in the modern period from 2005 onward wherein the royals are reduced to little more than celebrity figureheads. It wouldn't be fair to call the royal family entirely irrelevant in the modern day, developments like the progression of William and Kate's relationship and the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle drama have been heavily reported upon. Yet, the family no longer wields the same near-universal respect and power which made them an interesting subject for television drama. A recent poll, via Guardian, found support for the royal family among British citizens has been on a steady decline since data collection first began in 1983. In the crown season 7, the monarchy would be alienated from the mythic status that made earlier seasons compelling. The politics of dealing with the real-life figures became more challenging as the crown's storyline moves closer to the present. One could argue that the Prince Harry Meghan Markle storyline is the most dramatic development in the royal family since Princess Diana's passing, and a prospective seventh season of The Crown wouldn't be able to ignore it as a plot point. Netflix, which has a $100 million production contract with the real life Harry and Meghan, would probably have issues with any treatment of the couple. According to the Washington Examiner, Prince Harry has openly expressed his disapproval of being portrayed in The Crown. Although a young Prince Harry will appear in season six of the Netflix series, it is anticipated that he will not get much screen time. 
a more comprehensive season 7 representation from a show known for its disparaging portrayals of the royal family would undoubtedly cause a stir, forcing Netflix to make the difficult decision between one of its flagship series and its budding partnership with the royal couple. Netflix should let the crown finish with season 6 for a variety of reasons.